Well, welcome back guys, um, happy new year, we're into the first session of the year, um, first thing I'm going to do is shape these edges, get them down to the lines that are marked and then I'm going to sand the whole surface of the rest. Now all of this involves a lot of shh 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 and I think some power tools at some point. So I'm not going to film it, I'll come back to you when I've got it done. See you then. Right then, that's the first stage. I managed to shape the, the tops. Got there fairly good. Got a little bit of sanding to do in the top here. A little bit to take off here. And you can see I've sanded the, the majority of the hull. Found the high spots, the low spots. Some of them a little bit too high, so I've put some filler on and we'll smooth them down on the next phase. So I've got to set the filler and then we'll do the next phase and that's with a, a softer sandpaper. That was done with 120 grade. I'll use 240 grade for the next sanding and we'll see how that goes. Okay, see when I do that or when I've done it. Well, we're getting there slowly but surely. I'm now going to take some 240 grade sandpaper and um, do this very slowly and very carefully. Some big bits and some small bits. And this bit gets done without any machines. This is all done by hand. And I'm going to make it smooth. I keep showing you the little stages as we go along. There's real, I don't want to puddle up my video with noises of sanding machines or sanding for that matter. That's that's all you're gonna that's all you would hear if I kept the video running. So I'll come back to you when I've got this done and we'll see how we do next. Okay guys, that's both sides sanded down using the 240 grade sandpaper by hand. It's only a case of you get it until you can run your finger over it and it's smooth. You don't do any lumps and bumps. So, now to make it extra smooth, I will now apply a coat of um, satin varnish, it's, it's not a harsh varnish, it's not deep gloss, it works more like a, a sanding sealer and it will lift the grain from the wood. So I'll come back to you when I've got that done. Right then, just a few seconds for you, quite a few minutes for me. That's a complete coat of satin varnish applied. Um, that has to set now, I guess, probably about an hour, so I'm going to leave it overnight, since it's, it's now late afternoon for me. What I'm going to do is take these indoors, I've got a cutting board that I will use as you as you can see I don't have an awful lot of space in my shed and um, I've got these cutting boards which are great for well for cutting on um, and that would be a lot easier for me to cut them out indoors sitting at the table bring take my ruler in with me and my nice sharp knife and I'll cut them out one after the other, ready to, to get taped onto here, and that then lets me position where the gun ports will be, which I'll mark tomorrow. So I won't do that until this has dried and it's been sanded again, this time probably with 400 grit uh, paper, which is even finer. Um, 
We'll see how it goes. Let me show you some of that. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. And we're back. It's the following morning, in case you haven't guessed. I've uh, I've sorted out some 800 grade uh, paper to finish this hull off after varnishing it yesterday. I thought I had a sanding block. Let's just have a quick quick. Actually, what I've got are some of these pads. Now, these are, I think, 400 and 800. But I'm going to try the paper to start with. And we'll see how that does. It only the fine rub down there. Basically, all you're doing is taking... Where, where the uh, varnish has lifted the, yeah, just lifted the hair of the paper, off the wood, and um, you're just taking that off. You can feel it with your hand, it feels rough along here, smooth there. When I say it feels rough, it's not like it was before. I can assure you this isn't the last time this will be sanded. It will be done again. A few bits of filler to put in. I'm just trying to get it to a position where I can put the papers on and then cut the, the cannon holes out. See how this side is. I spent some time last night making or cutting out all these paper parts. This one is for the back end. We don't use that yet, so I'll put it back in the box. And what I did is I made photocopies of the whole sheet. <laughs> when I say made photocopies, it takes five photocopies to go from the back to the front. about to see something like that that's where it goes let me see one two three <gasps> yeah this this one cuts with this one somewhere about there right now so if anything happens to the ones I've got I can at least try and make another one and later on we're going to make some shapes up this end you can see on here the shapes and it requires you to cut these out so I shall cut them out from the copy so we'll put those in the box awaiting their use and then we'll try and fit these to the hole. Now I think it says five goes first. Let me just check. 
Yeah. Five goes first. So the good old masking tape. Now this one should be easy to mark up because the edge fits up exactly with the wood. This is when you know where you've done a good job with the trimming. Oops, there. Because, uh, good place to start in the middle so let's put some tape on hope it still has plenty of stick in it one thing I should warn you about is you're going to mark the bottom of this as well so see where I've done this try not to <laughs> it makes life a lot simpler if you don't have to mark it again afterwards it also helps if you find somewhere to stick it it's not on a a form I don't no already it's moved yeah it's moved Okay, let me stick this and I'll come back to you when I've got it on. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, first one in position highlighted a slight error here. Now they say this should be five millimeters, and that's what I measured. Uh, let's see what they measured it at. That's what I thought. That's nearly a centimetre. It's actually about nine centimetres, um, which is quite high, really. Uh, I know. Give the length of doubt. Seven and a half to eight centimetres. So if I take it down to meet the top of the paper, that means I've got to take this off here. So I've marked it to take it out. I've marked the bottom of the paper. Work out. I think I've got it all the way around. Now I can put some paper to hold that in position while I put the next piece on. So I have to be careful where I put it. Let's put it there in the middle. That should hold that down. I put a couple of pieces in just to. This is not where the cannon holes are going to be. It's quite do it up the end here. That should do it. Right, that should hold nicely for the next piece, which is T4. Now I remembered when I was cutting them out to put 
the numbers on. So T4 is here. Yeah. I've only just realized they had a number on each end, which helps. So, you see the cannon hose on this one. I'm going to go right up to that line. It's going to be interesting. And it's easy to line up because you've got the walkways up to the, to the deck. Just like that. The great thing with this tape that I'm using is it, it releases very easily from everything. The, so, sometimes it releases too early. So. One in. Don't worry about covering up the holes now because Those holes. Oh, I demarked them. No, I already see a problem. I put a tape right where there's going to be a hole marked. I'll oh, we'll have to take this back tape off. Yeah. There you can see. But top two are done. Don't worry about these bulges, they get smoothed down. And I hold it down as I'm putting the holes in there. Sorry, as I'm marking the holes for this. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Um, I'll do these and then I'll come back to you when I've got them done. Okay guys, that's one side marked up. You can see I did it. Uh, you can't see the markings yet. When I take the paper off, you will. Now I've got to take the paper off very gently so I don't tear it because it gets reversed to do the other side. So I'll do that off camera of course and uh, I'll come back to you when I'm ready to start putting them on the other side. Okay. Right then. For the next side, or the other side, I have to go and mark some lines on the backs of these so I can line them up. And they, they give you a whole set of lines. One, two, three, four five six so I will go and mark them because they have to go that way around I'm going to go indoors to do this because it's where I'm board this and have a brighter light so I'll do this and I'll come back to you okay got the other side marked now I'm trying to put it in place Thankfully they give you some nice little guides, like this edge, it's a good place to start, and that edge, look at that, the difference, camera, and put you, let's see if I can tighten that up at that one.
this on the top. Double held at that end. Try and reuse this tip where I can. Yes, that's not too bad. Stay. Probably here we have quite a nice breeze blowing today. I think it's the uh, leftovers of the is it Storm Hank that's just gone through? Something like that. Now look at that. It's almost on the line. This is when you find out your left and your right are not the same. I should say pot stab. Look at that. There's about a quarter of an inch in it. That's an awful lot. If that's got that sort of movement on it. Do is we'll mark it all up. Then we'll see how it sits. So That's one. Now you see the benefit of the lines that I, I drew. Join the lines up.
And there we go. So. And once again we mark the bottom. We mark the cannonballs. We are going to go. Well, if I do find it, bear with me, I'll come right back. Nice quick trip. It fell on the floor. So, last one. Now, that's it. Of course, the worst thing I would need to do to fix it is to actually take all the wood back off this side and redo it. I don't really want to do that, but if that's what it means to get it square, then I'll do it. I'll have to buy some more wood to do that because I guess there's not enough wood in the pack. The best, the, the keel part should be okay. Um, it's all from the top. And what I need to know is where the sh shift has come from. So as I say, if you've got any ideas, put them in the comments. I'll be quite intrigued to see if I get any answers. I said the way back in the introduction to this one, I unpacked it. But in fact, in the introduction to my channel, I say, I make mistakes and part of the fun of this is how to correct those mistakes even if it means redoing a whole chunk of the ship I'm not going to start from scratch again so don't suggest that Sure, keep these. You never know, I may have to use them again. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to cut any more of these out. I'm not going to cut any of them out at the moment until I can see if I can work out what's happening with this uh, twist. And if you want to see the twist, let's see if I can get it in line with the camera. Right, there's the tail end. Do you see a twist there? Actually, it's, the twist seems to have disappeared there. Maybe it just needed to sit for a while. Okay. I think it was quite pronounced. The, the angle from this end to this end was quite pronounced a few days ago. It doesn't seem to be there now, so... Uh, Maybe we're okay. 
the, the slightest twist I can take out. When I put the rigging on, I pull the mast over, and that, any perceived warp at that point would be on the mast. So that's uh, yeah, maybe it's worked its way out. Everything else seems straight, which is very confusing. Okay, I'll have a little break, and I'll see you when I come back. Okay, I've had my. Uh, little lunch break and now we'll try and cut some of these holes out. This pictorial instruction sheet that we have here says we start with this one up here. This space right here. Now let's see if I can put the camera in a place where you can see what's going on. Let's put some light on the subject to start with. Okay. Set my drill up. As I said, they show it with a rather large drill. And then the square file. And they do the whole roll before they uh, move to the next stage. So, I think that's going to be about 1.3 millimeters. Now my luck with these drills is I break them very easily. See, I think what my plan is, it's certainly not a job to be rushed.
This knife has a better point than the other one. Okay, I think you get the idea. Um, I'm not going to sit here and film me cutting out all these cannon holes along this row because the idea is to do this whole second row and then put the liners in. So when I've got the second row cut and on the other side, I'll come back to you. That may not be until tomorrow, which could be on the next video. We'll see how it goes. Catch you later. Okay guys. Okay guys, that's one whole row of cannon ports opened up. Doesn't look too bad. Um that's about it for today for me. Um I shall carry on tomorrow with the same row on the other side. And then after that we start doing some liners. So See you tomorrow. Well, I'm back. <clears throat> I didn't finish my video here. I decided I would do the other side in the same way. I'll let you see what the finished article is. Um, I also had a quick look down through the stages to come. Um, I will need to get a pencil then under here. This all is covered with a second layer of wood. So I'm not too, I've got it nice and smooth anyway. Um, but it's going to be covered up again. So uh, we'll see how that goes as, as I get around to it. So um, I'll carry on and drill these holes out. And uh, I'll come back to you. There we are guys, all the holes on the that row on the starboard side done. The next bit now is to make up some little wooden frames which will go inside those holes. Um, I just need to reorganise myself a little bit so I've got space to cut. Uh, I think I worked out 17 holes on each side. And you can see that all these frames are going to be the same size, so some of these holes are going to have to be made bigger to fit. Only that, because I marked them to the holes on the uh, on the masking plate that they gave you. But yeah, these things are made to try us. You, I, you can definitely see that that one is smaller in height than that one, but the bottoms are like fairly level, so that gives me a good guide. Okay, let's move things around and make some space and then we'll start cutting out some little frames to make frames. Just to give you some idea of the scale of these, this is, these are the parts 88 and 89. Now two of each of these make up the frame for one of those ports. Um, how can I give you an idea of the scale? Well, it's easy. I just hold a ruler up. Can you see the measurement there? They are about four millimeters high. So this will be fun. Well, let me cut a few out and uh, then I'll come back to you and I'm going to stick them together. So just to finish this video off for this week, there we have 36 inserts ready for the cannon ports they just have to sit and set then they'll be sanded a little bit just to clean them up take all the scotch marks off them and uh, then we'll try and fit them into the ship i guess that what i do is i put this against the port mark the outline make the hole a bit bigger and put the outline in there's no hard and fast 
instruction here. There is a video online which I'll go and have a look at and see what I can find. Okay, that definitely is it for this week. Um, I'll start to turn back now on my two videos a week. I think if I get enough work on each day, I can do two videos a week. Okay, see you next time.